I agree just empirically that if you can absolutely eliminate what you eat between defined meals, and that could be two or three meals per day, um, most people will have not just an improvement of body weight and body composition, but biomarkers get better. I mean, you, it, you tend to not be snacking on the best things to begin with. And actually, this is where one of the things where I have found fasting to be a valuable tool, because if you put somebody through a three, five, or even longer day fast, I'm talking a water only fast, even once in their life, they learn a very important lesson, which is I'm not going to die if I'm hungry acutely. <clears throat> um, if I made you fast for 40 days, you might die. But I pretty much don't think there's a human being on this planet outside of the most, you know, sick, you know, individual who couldn't go five days without food and, you know, subsiding only on water and, and minerals. And something about doing that, even if you do it once for no other reason, it teaches you a couple of things. One, you can do it. That's a big aha moment. Two, hunger comes in waves. So that yes. five day period of eating nothing, you will have periods of time when you literally want to eat your arm and you will have periods during that five days when you have forgotten that you're fasting. And yep. so when you take that mindset into, okay, Lane, I just put you through this five days of, you know, very difficult fasting. Now we're going to go to a regimen where I just don't want you to eat any snacks. And that means from noon till six, I don't want you eating anything. And now all of a sudden you're like at three o'clock, I'm really hungry. But you now anchor that to something that was so much more severe, which is, wait a minute, I'm really hungry because I haven't eaten in three hours. I'm going to eat in three hours. I think I can make it. And uh, at least for me and for a number of patients that I've used this sort of method with, it's a very powerful tool. And you don't need to become a fasting guru to do this, right? You don't have to do a quarterly fast to experience this. I think just one fast will teach a person this lesson. And I, I certainly remember the first time I really had that aha moment when I did my first really long fast and realized everything that I knew intellectually, but all of a sudden it emotionally made sense as well. Well, people confuse hunger and appetite a lot. So there's a, here, here's the other big thing is people say, well, you don't get as hungry on the ketogenic diet or you don't get as hungry on the plant-based plant -based diet. You don't get as hungry on X, Y, Z. I say that's true, but there's a lot more reasons people eat other than hunger. In fact, I would argue that some of the major reasons people eat has nothing to do with physical hunger, that it's actually societal cues, um, stress, and various other things. And so one of the things we'll, we'll tell our clients- Boredom is a big one for me. Absolutely. <laughs> one of the reasons that exercise, people, one of the reasons exercise works so well is one, it sensitizes you to satiety signals. That's actually the, the most powerful effect it has on weight loss. You actually become more sensitive to your satiety hormones. But two, you're spending an hour doing something physical where you're, you're, you're not bored and eating, right? So it, it, it makes a difference. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.